What's up, what's up? How y'all doing today? Back for another video. And it's over the Supra. Um, I've already had multiple comments like, yo, bring back the Supra content. So here we are. I need to put on the welds in the rear. Um, so for me to do that, I need to raise the rear. So that's what I'm gonna be working on today. And I kinda wanna take you guys through the process. Having coilovers, lowering springs that are adjustable in this car are kinda weird. <laughs> So I already got the wheels in the back loosened up, so I'm gonna take these off. Unfortunately, I don't have the uh, the conversion, so it's just the bolts. I ran through a long thing a long time ago, if you guys followed me back then, where, and I still actually have this problem, where it kind of vibrates at like 30 miles an hour, but I've had all of these wheels, uh, what's it called, balanced, like four or five times, and we haven't figured it out. So I'm actually kind of thinking, it might be the PS4S is in the front because it wasn't a problem on stock wheels when I put the stock or stock tires. It wasn't a problem the stock tires were on the TEs, but then I put the PS4S is on the front. Then it was an issue. Um, and I know it's not the rear because I can swap the rear out for the welds and it's not an issue. So I think it's the PS4S. So that little black piece that you can see the threads on with the spring, there's no like little pin on the frame here that like sticks down and little hole on this that they could sit in so it keeps this from spinning so what happens is you try to spin this well this spins too so the whole assembly spins at the same time which really sucks because that means i have to take this whole thing off take the spring out and then i gotta adjust it anyways peep these spl arms bada bing bada boom and then that titanium exhaust, brother? Sheesh. All right, so I'm gonna start removing these. It is relatively simple. Um, it's just this bolt, this bolt, and then you should be able to just pull it down. Um, that one I leave tight, because it doesn't need to be loosened. Plus, this is um, your adjustment, so don't really mess with that one. The whole spring assembly is out. This is what it looks like, and this is what I'm talking about. So if there was a hole in this or a pin in this you could attach it into that to where this doesn't spin when you spin the uh the right height adjustment anyways and here's my spring assembly these are swifts so i'm going to oh it's hot outside it got hot real quick in florida so i'm going to raise this or raise the rear end um i think about three-fourths of an inch so that's how much I raised the rear, the rear. You can see roughly, you know, where it's super shiny. That's where the little perch was sitting. Yeah. So that was about a half inch. Um, I think a half inch will be enough to put me at a good position. I don't know. I'll see. That's where these come in handy because then I can just put all this back together and then lower it with the wheel on and then raise it back up if I don't like it. Coils are back installed on both sides. But the issue I'm having is the strut is not extending. It's like super seized on there. Same with the other side. So I got this soaking the PV blaster. I'm gonna see what I can do for that. If that doesn't work, I guess heat it is. So heat gun for the dub. It worked. Got these bad boys adjusted. Wow. The car is up. I wanted to show you guys my fuel system because my fuel system didn't get a whole lot of views. But my fuel system that I made is wild. So, while I have you guys here, if you can see, I have a radium top hat, and every single one of my fuel lines is a PTFE line. So this big one right there, that's my feed line. They all kind of merge together, but that's where the factory feed line used to be. It's a PTFE line, and then that's another feed line, and then that's a return line. I got it. Um, I think I went a little too much, though. Quite a bit of wheel gap there. I can fit one solid finger in there, straight on both sides. <sighs> I mean, it's not bad, but um, I don't know if I want to leave it there though. 
don't know if I want to lower just a little bit or leave it there because obviously higher it is the less camber I'm gonna, natural camber I'm gonna have like if you look like there's almost no camber now so part of me kind of wants to leave it it is race car hmm. recently discovered how to pull up basically monitoring on your screen and your Supra like this is a Supra um, I actually discovered how to do this on my GR86 and I figured I'd show you guys how to do it it's pretty much like a GTR screen kind of the GTR screen is obviously going to be way better and way cooler looking but I figured I'd walk you guys how to do this and basically how to get this so to start off you're going to want a OBD2 connector I have the VPeak one I'll show up a picture on the screen here this is the one I have you just plug it into your OBD2 port and then you download the OnTrack app. So you can pull that up and then it gives you these parameters. So when you go on your phone, um, you can set any parameters you want. There is gonna be a limited amount unless you pay for it. If you pay for it, you get all the, pretty much anything that they can give you and you can pull it up on your screen. This is a alternate way instead of having this thing. Uh, Cause this thing is like $300 and doing this was like 30 bucks to buy the OBD2 connector which i'm sure a lot of you guys already have and then on top of that the app is free unless you want to pay i think it's monthly like 3.99 or something and then you can get all the parameters and then you can even display more than two right now it's only two because i'm not paying um and then it gives you details so this is something i had up earlier and then you can even read your check engine lights so it's pretty cool it's on your 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 touch screen something that everybody looks at and messes with so i figured i'd show you guys how to use it how to do it that's pretty much where i'm going to end this video nothing wild going on with the supra once i sound with the ecu i can start getting tuned again and we can actually start getting to the content people want to see um high horsepower content which is something i've been wanting to see so for this video you know i just adjusted the rear suspension whereas before it was so low with the te's that you know they were they were quite cambered um when i put those on Anyways, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. I thought that was pretty cool. Once I discovered that, I could do it on the Supra. I figured you guys might want to do it too. It's a lot cheaper than the other little P3V3 gauge. So, so I'm going to end it. If you guys have any questions, you guys want to see any videos specifically, just let me know in the comments. I will catch you guys in the next video.